Good morning. You're, you're very welcome uh, here this morning. Uh, as ever, I'm not sure if there's any visitors, but um, there's a cup of tea and coffee. Whether you're a visitor or not, after the service, you're very welcome to join us for that. Um, just want to um, thank uh, and welcome uh, Reverend Donald Byers here with us again. You'll know Donald, he spoke I think, several times over the last number of months when Danny has been away on sabbatical and various things. So, Donald, you're, you're very welcome here, and thank you. Uh, we look forward to hearing what you share with us today. Announcements. Nobody has given me any announcements, so uh, my job's quite straightforward. I'll just oh, so I've got to highlight um, one or two just from the the order from from, from the sheet. Uh, the first is just Kirk session tomorrow night at seven forty-five for the elders. Uh, the other is next Sunday. It is the BB and GB enrolment service. Um, so. Uh, I think we're, we're, we're very keen. There'll be a number of obviously the young, the, the young folk from BB and GB coming down with, with parents um, and, and, other, and, and others. And so it'd be great if you could join with us. We're hoping for a big turnout next week. So that's next Sunday morning, something to look forward to. And I think that's, that's it in terms of announcements. So um, I'm just going to hand over to, to Donald. Let us worship God, let us join together to raise his praise in the words of the hymn, We Plough the Fields and Scatter. Let us all stand and everybody singing. Now we have praised, let us pray. Let us all pray. Let us all pray as we 
we bow in the divine presence and we seek God's face for his blessing on our time together here. Our Heavenly Father, we come into your presence in the name which is above every name. The name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, he who loved us and who gave himself for us. He who said, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst. We are thankful that we can come in this familiar way and manner as children to a father. And as we come, O Lord, we confess again our many wants and feelings. We confess, O Lord, our sins and faults of youth. We confess our sins of thought and word and deed. Indeed, we can truly say, Forgive me, Lord, for thy dear son, the ills that I this day have done. So grant us that sense of forgiveness and peace in and through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And as we gather in congregation today, send down upon us in this special service the gift of the Holy Spirit, that our eyes may be opened, that our hearts may be touched, and that our lives may be changed and conformed. Remember in your mercy this day those who are unable to be with us, Remember the aged and infirm who can no longer meet with us in a place such as this. Remember in mercy those who are in, un, in other homes or institutions. Look graciously in those who may be in hospital at this time. Surround them with that sense of your, your peace and presence. May they know this day, this Lord's day, the Sabbath of rest, that round about and underneath in the arms of our gracious and loving Heavenly Father. So, Lord, now we commit this meeting to yourself, and we ask that you lead us and bless us, and all for Jesus' sake. Amen. Amen. We hear now from God's Word. The Scripture reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 3, and I'm going to take up the reading from verse 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, from verse 1. Let us hear the word of God. Brothers, I could not address you as spiritual, but as worldly, mere infants in Christ. I give you milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for it. Indeed, you are still not ready. You are still worldly. For since there is jealousy and quarreling among you, are you not worldly? Are you not acting like mere men? For when one says, I follow Paul, and another, I follow Apollos, are you not mere men? What, after all, is Apollos? And what is Paul? Only servants through whom you came to believe, as the Lord has assigned to each his task. I planted the seed. Apollos watered it. But God made it grow. So neither he who plants nor he who waters is anything, but only God who makes things grow. The man who plants and the man who waters have one purpose, and each will be rewarded according to his own labor. For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field, God's building. And we end there, verse 9. Amen. And may the Lord add his own blessing to this reading from his word. 
And now at this point, we, we have the, what I would call the, the kids' spot, and they're going to, we're going to learn a new song, I believe, uh, called My Lighthouse. And uh, I think Maura will lead this for us, is that right? Yes. Well, I'll hand over then, and we'll all do the best we can. I think for this one, this was one that the children requested on the worship feedback form. So it is quite a new one. So Erin here, my daughter, is going to play the guitar and sing as well. And if it probably won't be that familiar to you, it's quite lively. But if you want to sit down, you can join in whenever you feel you can, or you can just listen. And the words are all about Jesus being a lighthouse in the darkness and giving us shelter in the storm. So that's what it's all about. <coughs>
Thank you very much. And now at this point in our worship, we worship God with our gifts and with our offerings. The Lord's offerings will now be taken up. Right. Uh, yes, boys and girls are leaving for Sunday school. <laughs> they know the way better than I do. <laughs> Let us pray. Lord, we remember today that every good and perfect gift comes down from above. So we thank you for your many, many mercies to us in our individual lives, in our family homes, and in the family of God here in this place. Lord, accept now our gifts and our offerings this day and help us to bring with our gifts and offerings ourselves as living sacrifices into your service. And all for Jesus' sake. Amen. Amen. And now as we uh, approach the ministry of the word for today, let us join to sing once more, I will enter his gates. I will enter his gates. Can I, first of all, say how nice it is to be back with you here in, in Strand. Uh, I'm beginning to feel quite at home amongst uh, some of the folks here. Um, and I compliment you too on this lovely uh, harvest arrangement. I was wondering just how you were going to, to manage this because sometimes these modern buildings don't lend themselves to the harvest Thanksgiving decorations as some of the, the older uh, church buildings and meeting houses that we have. And I hope that you can see me hiding amongst all the fruit and vegetables here. Uh, I did say to somebody, I didn't, I didn't notice any turnips on the table, but someone did say that the turnips were in the seats. Uh, <laughs> I, see one, I see one cabbage and uh, you know, sometimes we're criticized for being very dull people in our denomination. But always remember this, that the Presbyterian cabbage still has a good heart. 
still has a good heart. Now let us turn our attention to uh, the message for today. And uh, I want to bring your attention to just the last verse that I read. Uh, I'll give it to you in the translation uh, of the Bible that I have. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 9. Or you are God's cultivation or you are God's field. Now, there are many allusions in the Bible here as to what we are or what we are like or what we ought to be. Uh, and today in this harvest address I want to bring one in particular to your notice. And it's in four simple, these four simple words. Ye are God's husbandry, or you are God's cultivation, or you are God's crops. Or in the translation that I brought with me, you're God's field. Now this is a lovely time of the year. I, I have, uh, my formative years, uh, my wife and I, our formative years would have been spent uh, in various parts of Belfast. But actually most of our lives have been lived uh, beyond the city uh, and we have lived most of our lives in the country and I know that this is a lovely time of the year there uh, when there's still a lot of warmth and sunshine about you might not think so today but yes there is uh, when the trees are taking on new colors uh, and the shrubs are beginning to stand out heavy with their berries and of course, the harvest of the land is in full progress. Uh, and where I would live, you would still see uh, lorry loads of potatoes and apples and, and carrots being brought in to be processed for the supermarkets uh, and various other outlets. The Bible here, too, celebrates this season, the season of harvest. And perhaps more than any other it's a time of joy and it's a time of celebration and a time of great gladness for the goodness of God. In the New Testament, we read of the Feast of Pentecost. You've heard of it. The Feast of Pentecost. What was that? It was the harvest thanksgiving in Jesus' day and in Jesus' time. And in addition to all that that stood for, Jesus made much of it in his teaching and in his preaching. The harvest and all connected to it uh, was taken and made into, into a great parable, if you like, of heavenly things. That is things which speak to us, speak to us of spiritual matters. Things which illustrate the situation of our souls. Things which declare truths to our hearts and to our minds. As perhaps nothing else does. Things which encourage us and things which caution us. And today, this morning, for the little time that we have together, I want you to think of what this simple statement before us today might mean for us. Ye are God's husbandry, or ye are God's field. In these four words, I think we will find, no, I believe we will find certain great truths which we do well, which we do well to remind ourselves of at the time of harvest. Great truths, <clears throat> yet simple truths. Truths which are easy to grasp hold of and contain. What are they? Well, the first thing which is implied in these four words, you are God's field or husbandry, 
is that the church, the church is his field. <coughs> it is not our field. It is his field. And as far as we are concerned, it is a matter of occupy till I come. Occupy till I come. Till who comes? Till the Lord of the harvest comes. And in this field, we are to find ourselves till he come. Now we'll look at this field a little later on and what in particular perhaps we ought to be doing in it. But for now, let me give you a description of it. To begin with, it is a big field. It is a very big field. It is such a big field that it, it encompasses the whole world. The whole world. Men and women from every race shall be found within it, within the church. People from the past <coughs> and people in the present and even beyond the present day and age for the psalmist says and generations yet unborn shall praise and magnify the Lord the Jews that Jesus had to contend with thought that it was theirs and theirs alone but Jesus told them that because of their uh, that because of their unbelief and their unfaithfulness, it will be taken from them and given to another. The paraphrase which we used to sing from the book of Isaiah foretells its, its universal nature, the universal nature of the kingdom, the beam that shines from Zion Hill. Do you remember the words? Shall lighten every land. The king who reigns in Salem's tower shall all the world command. Yes, it's a big field. It is a big field. A very big field and moreover, it is a, a costly field. Now, I am not familiar with the present price of land, but I know that it is a costly business to purchase some. I know <clears throat> that one would have to sit down and seriously consider the matter. One would have to, <clears throat> to weigh up many things. And of course, the bigger uh, the parcel of ground or the bigger the area, the greater the market price. And just to bring this up to date, wasn't that the whole sticking point with the right brush problem? The price of the land and the farm around it. This field that I am speaking of, the field of the church was purchased at a very, very great price. Indeed, so high was the price that silver and gold would not do. No, not even all the riches in all the world would not do. The Apostle Peter, speaking of this premium, uh, speaks of this premium when he says, Ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold, but, but, are you listening? With the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without spot and without blemish. 1 Peter 1. 18 and 19. And in that saying of the great apostle Peter, the valuation and the vicarious sacrifice of Christ are united. What can he mean, the apostle here? What is he talking about? He's talking about the cross. You understand? He's talking about the sufferings of our Savior for the field of the church. God's husbandry. God's field. Yes, it is just as we sometimes 
sing in a place such as this. With his own blood he bought her, and for her life he died. That's the first thing. The next thing we need to note is that some areas of the field, some areas of the field are not as productive as perhaps some others are. In some areas, the ground is hard. And the laborers, they often get, uh, here they often get discouraged. In, in perhaps other areas, uh, it is easy going and it is much more fruitful. And the laborer's task uh, is somewhat lightened and more cheerful. But whether the ground be hard and unyielding or more fruitful, the laborers work on and on and on, sowing, sowing, sowing. Season after season, Sowing, sowing, sowing. Sowing what? Sowing the good seed of the word. Sowing the seed of the gospel. Sowing in the morning as we used to sing. Sowing seeds of kindness. Sowing in the noontide. And the dewy eve. Why? Waiting for the harvest and the time of reaping. When we shall come rejoicing. Bringing in the sheaves. You know it is a great privilege. Do you realize this? It is a great privilege to have a gospel ministry here in this place. To have a gospel ministry in these days and in a place and area such as this. It is one of the greatest blessings, if not the greatest next to that of personal salvation, and do you know why? <clears throat> because here we find the means of grace. The apostle puts it this way. It pleased God. It didn't please the world. It didn't please man. He says it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. 1 Corinthians 1.21 Preaching what? Preaching ourselves? No. Again, think of the words of the apostle here. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord and ourselves, your servants, for Jesus' sake. So let us not trivialize the means of grace. Let us not minimize God's field. Let us not belittle the, the place of the church in our, in our lives and in our worship and in our service. How sad it is that when the church comes into the minds, into the minds of many people today, folks think of anything but its principal task, its mission, the proclamation of the gospel, the calling of men and women and young people people to faith and to the feet of the Savior. Rather, what is the position that we get? Rather, the position that we often find is the church. Ah, yes, a wedding. The church. Ah, yes, a funeral. The church. Ah, yes, a baptism. The church, Christmas Day, Easter Day, the harvest, Thanksgiving, the old hymns, time for church again. Now listen, all of these things no doubt have their place. But remember this, the church is God's field. And ye are God's husbandry his cultivation, his crops. Now, what else can we infer from these uh, four simple words, ye are God's husbandry? Well, I've already just stated it uh, when I said people. People are his crop. <clears throat> 
When we talk of the church today, we often think of the bricks and the mortar. But the church in the New Testament here was not bricks and mortar. It was people, people like you and I. And uh, various terms are used to, to describe these people. One term that our Lord uses is wheat. Wheat. See, for example, that great parable of the, the wheat and the tares, Matthew chapter 13. And the picture that we get there is that the field is the world in which the gospel is preached. And into it, the good seed is sown. The servants are his laborers. And what springs up is wheat, symbolizing his people. However, we know, don't we, that it's not a perfect world. It's not a perfect world in which we live. And even in our own personal lives, things are never always 100% as perfect as we may wish them to be. So too, at this time, it is the same in the kingdom of God. And the harvest hymn sums up the real position as we, as we have it today. Wheat and tares together sown unto joy or sorrow grown. Do you know what tares are? Well, <clears throat> the tares are the wild darnel. It's a rye grass, once common, once a common weed among cereal crops. You don't get this uh, in our technological way of farming today because the crops are all spread. So all you get is what you've sown. But in the days before all this uh, modern technology, <clears throat> you had this wild rye grass which grew up among, uh, which grew up am among the good crop, the tares. In the springtime, <clears throat> it would have grown up just among the wheat, and it looked just like the wheat. Uh, but in reality, it was a weed. It was a weed which produced nothing, <clears throat> nothing but its own useless seed again. And you and I, says Jesus, we are like one or we are like the other. We are like one or we are like the other. We are wheat or we are useless grain. And this is the solemn truth. And it's not easy to tell the difference. But the point is, the point is this. We, my dear people, we flourish in grace or we flourish in sin. We prosper or uh, proliferate in grace or we perish in sin. Now let me be very clear as to, uh, as to where this is leading. <clears throat> and what I want you to grasp is this. Only the fruits of grace are his harvest. We either mature in grace or in sin. So let me ask, where do we stand? Where do you stand in all of this? Where do you stand? What of your soul is it the fruits of grace that you're aiming for? Or is it the fruitless, useless, uh, cast away tares or weeds that describes your position? Well, I trust it is the former and not the latter. For that only is what the great husband man, the Lord of the harvest, looks for, waits for, and joys to behold. One last question. What are these fruits of grace that I might know where I stand before the Lord of the harvest? They are firstly the fruit of a believing life. Let me ask you, do you have that? 
Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Acts 16, 31. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. What a promise. Faith then. Faith in Christ. Do I have it? Ask yourself that question today. Do I have it? And then in the second place, the fruit of a faithful life. Let us not be like many today, fair weather followers. Yes, it's easy. It is easy, I would say, to be faithful when the sun shines and when all seems to be well in your particular world. But, but more is required of the wheat of heaven. We are to be faithful not only, not only when the sun shines, but also when it rains, when it pours down in the very storms of adversity are threatening to tear us from our roots. Anything else? Yes, one final thing. The fruit or the fruits of the Spirit. And you can read of this in Galatians chapter 5 and in particular verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. Having these things, then it can be truly said of us, ye are God's husbandry, or you're God's field and crop. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord our God, save us from living aimlessly, or seeking to make our home only in this present passing world. Give to us more and more of the pilgrim spirit as season passes season. And as year gives way to year, teach us not to look only on the things that are seen, but on the things which are eternal. And may our prayer ever be Lord of harvest, grant that we wholesome grain and pure may be. These things we ask in Jesus' name and for his sake and glory. Amen. Now let, let, us, let us bring our worship to a close as we join to sing once more our final praise. My heart is filled with thankfulness. Let us all stand and everyone singing.
And now may grace, mercy and peace from Father, Son and Holy Spirit rest and abide upon each one of you and upon every home represented here, both now and forever. Amen.